Well, thank you for joining me today again on our Side by Side. I mentioned yesterday that I was going to take a little break from Proverbs just for a few days. We've come to a part in Proverbs where it can really, the first nine chapters, deal with a number of long prose or poems, and then we go into much more detailed Proverbs. And I'm planning to follow Ray Ortland's outline there and pick up on big themes like our words and our humility and different themes that we can practically really think into. So I thought I would turn to prayer. And the reason this has been on my mind a little bit, that the idea of prayer and what prayer is and, and what it ought to be and how our prayer lives can be more meaningful and more rich and more special. In this last 11, 10, 11 months, we have been forced to think about lots of different things and we've been encouraged to slow down in our lives. And slowing down in prayer is a really important thing. Slowing down just to think about what am I doing when I pray? I wonder if you feel a bit like me sometimes. You've got your prayer list and it looks quite long and you're thinking, oh dear, you know, how long will it not take me to get through this? And, and you, it's nearly seen as a chore because I do pray over many similar things each day. Now, that's not to say if I'm praying for you that you are a chore to me. But there are times, I think, in all our praying when it's like hard work and it requires effort. And so as I think about our praying, let's think about how we can maybe see more life, more, more vitality in it and just a little shot in the arm for us for a few days. So I, I turned in, in Luke's gospel to think about Jesus and praying because I thought if anybody prays with wisdom, it's the Lord Jesus because everything he does has got to be the exact perfect way to do it. He is the perfect man. So we read that when Jesus was praying in a certain place, Luke 11, and when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John's disciples taught him as John taught his disciples. And then he said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone who is indebted to us, and lead us not into temptation. Now, I know it may sound a little bit different to what you normally do, but that's maybe the Matthews version, but they are essentially the same. So I started to think about this and slow my own heart down today. And just thinking about uh, some of the words as we go through it, Jesus begins by saying, you need to learn how to pray. And I thought that's really quite remarkable. Just as conversation may come naturally to a child, as they listen to others who are speaking, so that if you grow up in in an in a, in a English-speaking country, you will speak English, and if you grow up in Belfast, you will have a Belfast accent or dialect, or if you are in North Antrim or Bushmills, you'll have a slightly different one, or if you're, you know, in some other part of the country, maybe up in um, the Northwest, you'll have a different Limavady or whatever. And it's the same that, you know, we as believers, we need to be associating in a certain way with the people who we want to be influencing us in our praying, our words, our words, the way our capacity to speak comes from our association with the very one who created this language himself, the Lord and his Son. So it helps as we read through the Bible, as we spend time in God's words, we turn the words of God into words of prayer, just as you and I have learned to turn the words of conversation around us into words of language that we use in all our communication with those people. So Jesus is teaching them how to pray, and we're learning by our association with our Lord in his word. And where does Jesus begin? Well, he begins with the word Father. Now, some translations have our Father. Well, that's also an important word because it talks about there being more than one person. It talks about Jesus identifying himself maybe with us, you and I. He is our Father. You are my brother. You are my sister. That's an amazing thought when you think about that. And the Bible teaches that, that he is pleased to call you and I 
family members, brothers and sisters. But think of the word father, because that really is so crucial here. When we're praying, we begin to think about the person to whom we are having this conversation. And if the word Jesus encourages us to use is the word father, it puts an enormous weight upon that word of insight and explanation and invitation and hope, all those things, because he is not just any father. The Lord Jesus Christ is talking about his father, who is the perfect father. Yes, the perfect father. He is described various times as the father of all mercies, the God of all comfort. He is The Father who knows us, as a father pities his children, so the Lord pities them that fear him. He is the one who's described as the how much more father. You know, he goes on later in this passage to talk about what father among you, if a son asks for a fish, will instead of a fish give him a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, well, how much more? Will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? What a wonderful picture is this idea of Father. So when you and I are in our place where we pray, whatever that place is, and there may be a special place, but then there are other times we're just going about life, walking in the promenade or driving in the car or just quietly going about things, but we're praying. We are praying to our Father who knows us, who loves us, who is compassionate towards us, who desires the best for us, who will help us to even pray the prayer we're trying to pray. I know that it sometimes is good to have lists, and if you're a list person, that's fine. I'm a bit of a list person, but it falls apart usually at some point, and I need to create new lists. But I think there has to be a place for just spontaneity with your Father. Enjoying being with your Father. What comes out of our hearts when we're with our Father? When we're just having time together? May not be any words. That's prayer too. Just sitting, enjoying the company of the Lord as you maybe are reading his word, thinking about him, reflecting on your day. That's bringing life into your prayer because your prayer is not words. Your prayer is a relationship. That's what prayer is. Prayer is part of a relationship. Anybody can repeat the Lord's Prayer, and thousands, if not millions of people do it every week, and don't even think about it. Well, that's not a relationship. Using words without thinking is certainly not a relationship. But the Lord is asking you to come alongside him and listen to him and speak to him in that lovely, perfect relationship. I've no idea what relationship you have or have had with your father. If it's been good or bad or indifferent, don't let that in any way diminish your relationship with your heavenly father. I mean, I didn't know my father until I was 40 years of age, and I had, I suppose, a pretty distant relationship, you would say. But it hasn't in any way affected my relationship with my heavenly father. I know they're not the same, and that's okay. And I respect my Father, and the Lord has called him home. But you and I, we are going to spend time with our Father. I think that's the key, isn't it? That we shouldn't rush our prayer, and we shouldn't merely try to do the list. Sometimes you know it's good not to do the list at all. Don't do the list. Just take some time today. Sit down. And just enjoy the company of your heavenly Father. Take his word. Let him speak to you from it. And just reflect it back to him in praise or thanks. And I don't doubt but your prayer will have a little bit more life in it. And go and enjoy it. Because it's meant to be enjoyed. It's not meant to be endured. The Lord bless you as you do. And tomorrow, God willing, we'll think about what it means to hallow our Lord's name as we pray. God bless you today.